Also added the UI Blackboard value bool, a new version of the script, to the three UI elements here. So we can see those turn true when we've triggered the boxes. So now we can see that as we move, our distance and meters traveled are being passed to the Blackboard, and we're able to read them out into the UI there. And as we enter the red zone, the blue zone turns on through the event, and we see that red is now true. Similar, green is turned on, and then, or blue is turned on when we go through green, and now we've gone through all three and they're all turned on. So that was an example using the Blackboard to communicate data between different objects without those objects actually talking to each other, instead all just reading and passing data into the Blackboard. So stick around and see how this is set up, and I look forward to your positive five-star reviews on the Game Modules Bundle, which this is now a part of. Thanks. I'm going to start using a duplicate of the inventory demo here, and so that way we can move around and do some other things uh, in the Blackboard demo. So the first thing we need to do is add the Blackboard uh, prefab here to the scenes. In our demo files, we're going to create a new folder. And in that, we're going to create game modules, create Blackboard values. Now, this object is going to be called our demo starting values. And these objects are going to allow us to set some topic, subject, key, and value pairs for the Blackboard that will start when the game starts. And so we're going to start a couple here. Uh, we're going to do one with the party and to call this distance traveled and we'll just click that to add and we're going to also do one called meters traveled so let's go ahead and open these up and check them out we have our topic and subject and our exposed data types if we expand this we can select which data types we'd like to have exposed now all of these data types are going to be on the object and they can be manipulated via your code but exposing them here allows other modules to work with them more easily and automatically select certain types. So for the distance traveled, we're going to expose the float, and for the meters traveled, we'll expose, expose the int. And we're gonna start both of these at zero. If these values were to be set at say 10, then this value would start at 10. But if the topic subject is already on the blackboard when the scene starts, this value will not overwrite whatever is already on the blackboard. So this only comes into play when the topic subject is being added to the blackboard for the first time. Now to use this starting value object, I'm going to select our blackboard in the scene and just drag this over to the starting values. You'll notice that the blackboard also has a dictionaries module. So if you'd like to use that in your code, you can. Um, I'm not gonna demonstrate it in the demo scene here, but it is something available to you and it's serializable so you can uh, save and load those values as well. It's just one more way to utilize the Blackboard. Right now we see that the notes are empty, but if we press play here, all the notes from the starting value have been added here. And as you can see, all the values are available for you to use, uh, even if you did not expose them. So let's go ahead and start working with this data. So first I wanna be able to track on the Blackboard how far the player has moved. So I'm gonna add a new script. We're gonna call this player distance traveled. Let's go ahead and add this to the demo player and open up the script. So we're going to put this in the infinity PBR namespace. And then we're gonna need some uh, variables here. One, we're gonna need some, a vector three for our last position just to cache that object or that value. And then a uh, private int for our last meters traveled. And this is gonna be negative one to start. And we're gonna save a boolean for whether or not we've been set up uh, and start that off as false. And then I'm gonna make some properties here as well. We're gonna do a public uh, vector three uh, for last position. And this is just gonna call our last position. And then uh, one for our current position. And this is just gonna get our transform.position. So it's a little bit easier in the code. All right. And then at the start, we're going to update our last position. 
just to cache that at the very start. And for this, we're just going to say last position equals transform position. And so we will skinny that up here. And in our update here, we're going to do our initial setup. And we'll create a new method for this. And for now, we're just going to say if we've set up, then we'll return otherwise, oops, otherwise set setup equals true. All right, so we're going to be tracking the distance that the player has moved in the X and Z axes. We're not going to be caring about the Y axis for, for this demo. And so in our update loop, we're going to start by, uh, you know, not doing anything if we haven't moved. All right, so this is basically going to say if our position X and position Z match the last position, then we will just return. If we're falling or rising straight up or straight down, then uh, that will not be included in our distance traveled. And for that, we're going to update the distance, removing the Y value, and then updating the last position to cache that value as well. All right, so this is where we're going to actually update the Blackboard value here. And we need to call the Blackboard for this. So up here, we're going to type in using static in, oops, static infinity PBR dot modules dot blackboard. And that will call, get our blackboard from the scene. And so down here, we just need to say blackboard dot update note, update note, and then where a topic is going to be party and distance traveled. And the value is going to be the vector two dot distance between position one and position two. So we also need to get the meters traveled and we're gonna cache this distance value up here cause we're gonna use it for the meters traveled as well. And to get that value, we're gonna say var uh, meters traveled is going to be equal to mathf.floor to int of the distance traveled. And then for the blackboard here, we're going to update this to meters traveled and pass in our meters traveled. However, since the blackboard has a built-in event system, we don't necessarily want to update the note if something hasn't changed. So before we update this note, let's do a quick check to see if the value has changed. Great, so here we're just checking to see if the last meters traveled is equal to the meters traveled, and if it is, then we're just going to return. Otherwise, we will do our update on the blackboard, and then I'm just gonna cache last, oops, we're gonna cache last meters traveled to be equals to meters traveled so that we're ready for the next frame. And let's add one more cache here. We need to cache our last position, and that's going to be equal to position. Currently, this is updating the note with the last distance traveled from the frame, uh, prior frame. And so we need to add to this value the saved Blackboard value, uh, which is going to keep track of uh, every frame. So instead of uh, replacing this, we need to add to it. So let's create a new property up here where we get the uh, current value of the Blackboard note, and then we're gonna add that to the distance traveled. And so this, we're going to just grab the value float from party and distance traveled, and we'll spell that right. And then down here, we're going to add in our distance traveled plus our new distance traveled. And if we want to be a little bit more clear, we can say uh, uh, distance this frame. And that way we are more specific about what we're adding there. And then now instead of getting the floor to into the distance traveled to this frame, we're going to get the floor to int of distance traveled, which at this point will be updated because we updated it right up here. And now in our play mode, we have our value float and our value int for these two things here. And we can see that as we move, the value float for distance traveled is being increased and the int for meters traveled is being increased as well. So now in the game, any object that wants to read the blackboard has access to this data. They don't need to have access to the player or any other object that is being manipulated. Anything that has access to the blackboard now has access to these values we've exposed. So let's go ahead and use that in the scene. All right, so I've created a new little panel here and we're gonna 
print out the distance and the meters traveled to this UI. So I'll create a new script here and we'll call this UI blackboard value readout. And up here, we're going to have a public string for the topic and a public string for the subject. And we're also going to make sure we're using infinity PBR or infinity static infinity PBR dot modules dot blackboard. And we'll put this in our namespace as well. And we're also going to uh, cache our blackboard note here. So we'll do private blackboard note um, note and then we will do a public blackboard note uh, blackboard note and that's going to be get blackboard note And here we're just going to say if note does not equal null, then return note. We call the blackboard and do our try get topic subject out and note. And then return. And now we're going to create a new script for a float and a new script for an int that inherit from this readout. And let's add to this the stuff in the scene that we're going to need. We're going to need a public text text and we'll oops, import the right type here for UI text. Okay, can we have a reference to our text as well? So we're going to follow the Blackboard events. Um, rather than calling the actual value, we're going to update only when the value itself is updated on the Blackboard. And so in order to do that, we're going to uh, just put up here, I follow Blackboard. And then we're going to aft add the missing members. This is going to be the receive change and receive event. And the receive change happens when a Blackboard note is changed and the event happens when a blackboard event is set now in this case we're not actually using the events we're going to be using the receive change so not used we'll just put that there and then for receive change we'll just remove that for now and we need to make sure we subscribe to this as well so we're going to say so on start we're going to say blackboard subscribe and we're going to pass in this and and to make sure we're always only subscribed once, we're also going to start by saying unsubscribe and pass in this. And then finally on, and we'll unsubscribe on um, disable as well. And then we're going to subscribe on enable. But before we do that, we can see that we're repeating this unsubscribe call. And so I'm going to just uh, add two new methods here, private void subscribe and subscribe. And for, the, for this one, we're just going to say blackboard dot subscribe this. And, and we'll do a similar one for unsubscribe. And that way we can just type in unsubscribe and subscribe. And then on disable, we will do unsubscribe. And then on on enable, we will also do the unsubscribe subscribe trick there. And now we should be receiving a change. And whenever we receive a change, we really only care about our subject type here. So I'm going to just make a note of that for our topic and subject. Uh, and so we're going to say if the uh, blackboard note uh, is not equal our topic or if the blackboard note subject does not equal our subject, we're going to return. So just we only going to take changes that match our topic and subject. 
So this is where we would also add in our int or float, but of course um, this is going to be used for all of those things. So we're going to do a uh, update text and pass in our um, Blackboard note. And this is going to be a virtual void so that we can update this on uh, other methods here. So we're just going to leave that there. We're going to create a new script. We'll call this UI Blackboard value int. This is inherit from UI Blackboard values readout. And then public override um, void update text. And by putting our prefix here, and this is going to be our topic, and then subject. Well, for this one, we'll just do our subject and then a colon. And then we will add in our blackboard note.int dot value int. Be able to put that right there. And then save that off. So we're going to bring this on to meters traveled and we will set the topic to be party and the subject to be meters traveled. Of course, text will be automatically populated. So let's go ahead and press play and see what we get. All right. So now we see our meters traveled is being updated in the UI as we move about. All right. Let's go ahead and duplicate this one and we'll do one for floats as well. And now with that attached, as we move, we also have our distance travel being updated as well. So in the scene, I've created these three transparent cubes, a red, a green, and a blue one with the colliders marked as triggers and the player will have to step into the red, then the green, then the blue, and each one will cause an event to fire. And we're going to have the green box turn on when the red is stepped into, and the blue turned on when the green is stepped into. So we can see how events can be used to turn objects on and off and have other effects in your game. All right, so I've created a new script called color cube zone for these cubes, and of course we're going to be using uh, our static reference to infinity pbr.modules.blackboard for this. And let's go ahead and check out the Blackboard event script. There's a few things that are passed with any Blackboard event. These color cube zone is going to receive a Blackboard event, and it's going to have a topic, game UID, status, and an object. All of these are technically optional. Um, and in this case, we're probably going to um, I don't know, pass a uh, button pressed or event or cube entered or something like that um, with the status as true or false and um, game UID is probably going to be null and object is probably going to be null as well. Um, but it's a, just an event that can be passed to um, other objects that are listening to them. So let's go ahead and set that up. Uh, similar to before, we are going to say um, I uh, follow Blackboard and add space there and we'll add a and implement the missing members and we're going to be uh, no action here so we're not going to do anything with receiving a change but we are going to do something with receiving the event so what we're going to need is each cube is going to turn on if another cube is turned on so we're going to be listening for a topic and a uh, game UID and a status. So in this case, um, we're going to put in a header here and we're going to put a public string uh, topic. And for these, I'm going to start these off. Oops, we're going to start these off as uh, uh, cube entered. or we'll say zone entered. And this could be used in your game for opening doors or pushing buttons or anything like that as well. Any sort of trigger, really. This is sort of like a trigger. Um, and then we're going to do public uh, string game game UID. In, in this case, uh, we're going to get a game UID from the event, but we're not going to use a, a game UID. Instead, we're just going to look for a color. Um, and so really we're going to look for like red, green, blue, etc. And then we're going to have a public uh, status, string status. 
And this is what we're going to be looking for, and we're going to be looking for on um, or entered. Yeah, um, the status we're looking for. So this is just going to make it a little bit more flexible. Um, and then here we're gonna we're gonna get our blackboard event, and we're gonna return if if these don't match. All right, so if the Blackboard event topic, game UID, or status don't match what we're looking for, we're just going to return um, because essentially we're not going to do anything unless those three things match. And we're going to, if they do match, we're going to turn on our uh, mesh renderer so and our collider as well. So if we look over here at these zones, like a green zone, we see that there's a box collider and a mesh renderer. Uh, and so what we're going to do here is uh, we'll do another header and just for ease of use as well we're just gonna add these at start All right, and then when we've received that event we're going to say mesh renderer and because we are also going to make this in this case it's only going to be a one-time um, one-time thing we're gonna do another a private pool here and we'll go up here to receive event if triggered then return uh, basically if we've already triggered this then there's no need to check anything else again um, so we'll just return there and we'll say here triggered equals true now red zone is not going to have this script on it because it's going to start um, enabled already and green zone and blue zone though will get this script okay, and I'm gonna rename this uh, listener uh, just to be a little bit more specific here and the green zone is going to listen for red and the blue zone is going to listen for blue all right and these are both going to start with their box colliders and their mesh renders off so nothing will happen now we need a trigger for these as well so um, we're going to create a new script call this color cube zone trigger now you know why i changed the other one to listener so the trigger isn't going to be listening for any events, but it is going to talk to the Blackboard because I'm going to want to add a note to the Blackboard saying that these have been triggered. Um, and that way, anything else that is looking for these in the future, maybe there's a secret door that opens once you've triggered all three or something else, uh, we'll be able to easily find out if all three have been triggered. All right, so we're going to start with an on trigger and enter, and I've hard coded the uh, player object name to this FPM inventory demo player. Um, that is something you can change in the inspector, but this is the name for the player here. So we're just going to check the object name uh, that collides with it to make sure it's a player name. So first, we're going to send. Uh, so we're going to add the event, and we're going to add the note. Um, and these are going to be two separate things. So the first one is blackboard.addEvent. And with the event, it's going to be looking for either a, a pre-constructed Blackboard event or a topic, uh, game UID, status, and object. And so in this case, we're just going to pass in variables that we've yet to create, topic, game UID, um, and status, and, and then object is going to be null. There we go. And then we're also going to add the note. And in this case, we're going to use the update note, which has the option to add a uh, if the the note if it's not found. And in this case, we're passing a boolean of true. So it's going to say that our zone triggered and we're going to set this to red, green or blue uh, is true. And one more thing that we're going to do is turn off this. Now that this is done, uh, we're going to say this dot enabled equals false. Um, enabled equals false basically turns off the component. In fact, uh, and we're also going to save a boolean triggered uh, equals true. So at start, if we're triggered, then uh, enabled equals false. So we're just going to turn this off if we're already triggered. This is going to be useful if uh, you're saving this in a, in a save file and you don't want this to be triggered every time the scene is loaded. So we're actually going to uh, copy this and we'll put this over here as well. Uh, or we'll do similar logic here. Uh, 
also added the UI Blackboard value pool, a new version of the script, to the three UI elements here. So we can see those turn true when we've triggered the boxes. So now we can see that as we move, our distance and meters traveled are being passed to the Blackboard, and we're able to read them out into the UI there. And as we enter the red zone, the blue zone turns on through the event, and we see that red is now true. Similar, green is turned on, and then, or blue is turned on when we go through green, and now we've gone through all three and they're all turned on. So that was an example using the Blackboard to communicate data between different objects without those objects actually talking to each other, instead all just reading and passing data into the Blackboard. And I look forward to your positive five-star reviews on the Game Modules Bundle, which this is now a part of. Thanks.